Hi everyone, I'm Disha Kaur and I'm Devanshi Panda and we're both from the Department of History. Today, we're here to discuss a period from fashion history that fascinates the both of us. That is Victorian fashion. The Victorian age spanned over about 64 years, which makes it difficult to categorize Victorian fashion in sense of styles, silhouettes, pattern, etc. and typically forms a very vague or even generalized narrative about what it, what it actually entails. Right, um, we know that Queen Victoria's period of reign was from 1837. In the middle of the era of Romanticism, we see longer sleeves, grand patterns giving a so-called feminine touch to the clothing. However, we also know that the Queen herself was more into a somber style of clothing with minimalistic patterns and a toned down colour palette. The Queen ruled till 1901 and for the later parts of it, fashion was heavily influenced by the Industrial Revolution in Britain and the fabric changed, the sewing techniques changed, etc. Yes, right, but oftentimes what we see is the Victorian fashion is understood as the way fashion was during the 19th century, relating to tight bodices, long flowy skirts without a supporting device under it. However, what we do not realize is that Victorian fashion encompasses different eras in itself with the saturated color pattern, palette, high colors and also at the same time fashion from 1850s including crinolines with relaxed cuts which sound very relevant with the trends in Sherlock Holmes and Jane Eyre like subcultures. When I think about the Victorians, I think about this really elite upper class of sophisticated people who splurged on expensive materials for their fashion. It's really interesting to actually see the strange trends they had during that time. Yeah, consider the use of arsenic to dye clothing. It was, a ve- it was very well known that arsenic could be used as a war- murder weapon, but this cheap element actually helped to dye clothes, wreaths, gloves and shoes a brilliant green colour. This was certainly a safety hazard as many women reported rashes. Desha, you are absolutely correct, but think about the even bigger danger for the people who were actually involved in manufacturing these said items. They were at much greater risk than the wearers of arsenic dyed clothing. Disturbingly, Victorians did not also hesitate to use insects and animals in their own fashion. Gold enameled weevil wing cases hung from necklaces, while jewel beetle elytra was embroidered onto muslin clothing. If you see images of these dresses online, you will think that these were vibrant and beautifully crafted pieces of fashion without ever realizing the gruesome procedure involved in making these. Yeah, adding to that, throughout the 1800s, feather production was actually industrialized as they rose in prominence and they were desired by the new mass market. Birds were actually killed all over the world to provide plumes to fashion hubs. If you think that this was the end of the Victorian absurdity, they also crafted jewellery out of human hair. Making wearable ornaments out of the hair of departed loved ones was a Victorian tradition. This gave rise to an accessory craze known as the mourning jewellery. You know, by today's standards, it may seem like a really creepy thing to do. But if you think about it, it could be seen as a romantic way to remember your loved ones. The trinkets, sometimes known as hair work, were painstakingly made by hand. English hair work was popularized by the royalty itself, especially by Queen Victoria, who wore Prince Albert's hair in lockets and brooches for decades following his death. The discussion on Victorian fashion would be totally incomplete without discussing corsets. So tell me, what do you think about corsets in general? Yeah, like have a look at any period drama set in the 19th century and you'll see a scene showing a woman getting tightly laced into a corset, yawling in pain. I'm sure you must have seen movies like Enola Holmes, which will convince you that these corsets were the most oppressive, anti-feminist devices employed ever. However, I'm not very sure about the historical accuracy of such portrayals. And you shouldn't be. You know, the myths surrounding corsets have become so dominant in the public domain that it's difficult to sift fact from fiction. Corsets were actually meant to be sized to body types, which is why when we see interviews of famous actresses complaining about how uncomfortable wearing a corset was, it might have been because the corset was not tailor-made for them. Both working class women and aristocratic women would wear corsets, which immediately debunks the myth that corsets restricted movement. Yes, exactly, because the Victorian era were more obsessed with creating this illusion of a small waist rather than actually squeezing organs to physically create these petite waists. Yeah, because working class women worked really labor-intensive jobs 
all while wearing the corsets. As far as the phenomena of tight lacing is concerned, it wasn't a common occurrence. It was only a brief trend and something that the elite society adopted for a brief period of time. As far as the corsets are concerned, they were also never worn in the direct contact with the skin. They were always worn over a loose garment called a shift or a chemise so that they would be comfortable to don on. So this was all for the first episode of the Trove Podcast. We really hope you enjoyed listening to us and finding out more than meets the eye about Victorian fashion. Stay tuned for the next episode. We've got lots more in the Trove for you.